in order to get to vehicle stability control, we're going to have to have the ABS along with steering wheel position and yaw rate sensors, signals to maintain lateral sideways traction at highway speeds. This will keep us from doing those horrible things like jackknifing and rollovers. Lateral traction problems can be categorized as oversteer and understeer conditions. Oversteer is when you turn the wheel and the back end comes around, very much like a jackknife in a truck. Understeer is when you turn the steering wheel and the vehicle continues to go straight. It doesn't respond to the turning. Here's an example. Understeer is a loss of lateral traction, where the yaw rate, which is called, could be said, the turning rate, is less than the intended path, as indicated by the yaw rate sensor and the steering angle sensor. The yaw rate sensor is located in the center of the vehicle. It's a very specialized sensor. We'll show you how it works. It actually calculates the true turning angle of the vehicle. Turning rate, I should say, of the vehicle. The steering angle gives us which direction the driver wants to turn. If it's indicating a steeper turn than the yaw rate is indicating, we have an understeer situation. And we have a way of correcting that. But first, let's get all these down. It detects the actual turning rate. The steering angle indicates the direction where the motorist wants to go. If the DCCM detects a difference in the desired vehicle path and the actual vehicle path, it's going to start taking action. It's going to apply brakes to certain wheels momentarily to correct the course of the vehicle. Not long term, not locking them up, just a momentary application of the brakes on specific wheels. Oversteer is a loss of lateral traction where the yaw rate, turning rate, is greater than the intended path. It's a rear wheel skid, another way of saying it, as indicated by the yaw rate sensor and steering sensor. So they're looking at this and seeing it happen. And again, the same thing. We're going to have jackknife prevention and trucks use the yaw rate and steering sensor to keep these engines from occur. Just remember, the trailer brakes reduce the trailer push. Notice the arrow back there is slowing it down. The trailer is pulling back rather than pushing, while the left front brake creates a force to counter the, the rotation of the tractor into a jackknife, as indicated by the orange arrows. So we apply the brake, which causes the tractor to rotate back to the left. The trailer is pulling back rather than pushing and keeps us out of, of a jackknife. Remember, this system reduces jackknife by 67%. Two-thirds of all jackknives are prevented by this. We can't say it enough. The, it detects the actual vehicle direction. We cannot see it enough times. It's located here in the center of the vehicle. If you look at this case, it's underneath the console. The steering angle is up by the steering wheel. The yaw rate sensor is at the center of gravity for the vehicle. Here's the way it works. It's a vibrating fork. It's like a tuning fork. It generates a signal that is described as a Coriolis effect. Now, look on the left. As we go left and right, it causes the resonator to vibrate left and right. That causes a torque on the bottom of it. And what happens is there's a center in the bottom to offset that torque. The amount of offset required is sensed by the, the system to indicate the amount of lateral side-to-side -side movement. Forward and back causes the tines to bend forward and back and have a twisting action. This is corrected by another sensor offsetting this in the bottom that uh, offsets this twisting effect. What happens is, it's fairly complicated, it generates a signal that can be described as the Coriolis effect. And you say, what is the Coriolis effect? Is that something at the North Pole? No, it's not. Coriolis effect can be described as the shape water would take in a spinning bowl. Let's see what we're talking about here. The black arrow indicates what the Coriolis re reading would be for a vehicle that's making a hard corner. It's censoring force in four directions. So we can see we've moved from the bottom. We're going straight and level, not accelerating, constant speed. So we weren't braking. We weren't accelerating, we weren't cornering, either way. When we cornered, the ball rolls up here. Think of it as a ball in a bowl, because that's what the sensor is going to see. It's going to have these forces and generate that information. 
So we can tell from that we're cornering hard. Is the steering indicating this is the right turning rate? If it is, we're in good shape. The uh, yaw and deceleration sensors are combined into one unit. You see them here in this little chip. One thing to be careful of. These are in the floor of the car. People with sunroofs frequently flood these sensors by leaving their sunroof open during a rainstorm, which can shut down the CAN bus because it has a CAN controller in there. We have found a couple of occasions where everything was shut down. No one could figure out why CAN could not communicate, only to find chips mounted in the floor of the car for the stability control like this and for passenger uh, classification for the airbags. Those two sources get flooded by open roofs. The yaw sensors have a two and a half volt center point that varies to indicate positive and negative yaw left and right turns. Now the other thing we've got to have to make this work is a steering angle sensor. It supplies information about the vehicle. We've got optical that look at lights. We've got MRE. Remember our magnetic resistive element? Even use, like I say, linear outputs from a potentiometer. This is necessary to identify the direction of the intended path of the vehicle. Here is the output of a sensor used by Bosch. It has two sensors. They go from zero up to a maximum and back down again. Now, if you'll notice, we're turning left. The blue sensor goes high before the red. If we're turning right, the red sensor goes high before the blue. The vehicle keeps track and calculates how many times it goes from zero to 360 to know the location of the wheel. All of these sensors, steering and yaw, must be zeroed for the system to work properly. Now that we've got the system down, we can sense the direction of the vehicle. We can tell the intended direction. We need to talk about how we go about actually controlling this and diagnosing it. We're going to talk about diagnosing first and then look at the controls for, after we have properly functioning yaw and steering angle sensors.